In this video, we are going to start using Octave to analyze dynamical systems. We'll start with a very simple system like this one here in the drawing, where we have a block with mass m, which can go back and forth in this direction that we're calling here x. And this system has some stiffness represented here by a spring with coefficient k. So the first thing we need is to understand how can we model the system. So we need to find its equation. For such a simple system like this one, the easiest way is simply using Newton's second law, which will look something like this. We'll sum the forces in the x direction. After all, our system only has movement in this direction. And that will uh, equal m times acceleration. So that's our notation for acceleration in x direction. So we need to find all the forces here in this direction. We'll not have friction as um, uh, demonstrated here by these rollers. We don't have any friction. Uh, the only force we'll have acting on the block is the elastic force coming from this spring. So if you do your uh, free body diagram for this problem, you will see that the restoration force is minus k, the elastic spring coefficient, times the displacement x, so this is simply Hooke's law, and that equals our m times acceleration. Uh, we usually put all the terms into one side of the equation, and you come to this classical way of modeling the dynamics of a uh, spring mass system. Now that we have our equation, we want to solve it for x, which is the displacement of this block here. And to do that, we need to solve this second order ordinary differential equation. I'll show the answer to that here, which you might remember from some calculus course you've done before. This is the expression for x, so this is the solution of this second order differential equation. It's interesting here for us to understand a few of the terms. We have these two terms, one as a cosine and the other as a sine. This amplitude of this cosine term is related to the initial displacement, so that's our initial condition for displacement. This other term here has an amplitude related to initial condition for velocity, so this is x0 dot. This omega n term here which equals uh, square root of k over m. This k is the stiffness, m is the mass. We call this omega n the natural frequency of our response. Now, this is the equation that we are going to use to analyze the motion of this system. So, we want to put that equation now in Octave. So, let's start uh, a new script here in Octave to do exactly that, to write th down this equation. So let's say uh, x is our x0 times cosine of omega n times t. And the second term will have some x0 dot. I'll write it down like this, over omega n times sine of omega n times t. You see that this omega n appears in three times in our equation. So this uh, will be the equation we are interested. We want to see x as a function of time initially. So uh, we are going to need to define what is the range of time that we are going to use and for each value of time, we're going to calculate an x related to that time. So that is going to be very similar to what we've done in previous videos, where we changed one parameter and we found the, um, the quantity we were interested related to that parameter. As this is a dynamical system, what will be varying here is the time. We want to see, as time goes on, what happens to our system, specifically what happens to our displacement x. So we need to find a suitable range for this time 
in order for us to understand what's going on with our system. So let's go on and say the time will vary from 0 in small intervals up to 10 and we can say that this is 10 seconds. So our time is going to run in seconds and we will have this vector or this array for values of time that we're interested to know the respective values of x. Further to that, we need to define all the parameters for our system. In this case, we need to find the mass, or need to define the mass, m, and the stiffness coefficient, k. So let's do that here. Let's say we have a mass of 10 kilograms. And we have a stiffness coefficient, k, well, actually not mass, m. And we have a stiffness coefficient, k, of say 100. Uh, remember that the stiffness coefficient unit is a newton per meter. So note that we don't use the m and k values directly here but they are used to calculate this omega n parameter which we can do right here by saying that omega n, the natural frequency, is the square root of k over m, which we defined previously there. Two other things that we need before we can calculate these uh, values of x is these values for the initial conditions, x0 and x0 dot. So we need to put those here as well before we use them in the equation. So let's say we start our uh, movement with uh, releasing this mass uh, one meter from the equilibrium position and we release it from a resting position, so the initial velocity is zero. So we can put here initial displacement and initial velocity something like that. So just to recapitulate, we have here our parameters. From these parameters we calculate our uh, parameter omega n. We also need to define our initial conditions for displacement and velocity. We define our array of values for time that we are interested. So we are going from 0 to 10 seconds in small intervals. With all that defined, we can then calculate the values for x. Remember that we are using this uh, vectorized notation in Octave. It understands that t is an array of values. It has a bunch of values here for t. As we use that inside the expression that we are using to calculate x, it will also calculate a bunch of values for x, each one respective to the values in t. So, as we calculate that, we want to show that in a figure, so we're going to use, again, our figure and plot commands, and we're going to use it to display the time in the horizontal axis and the displacement in the vertical axis, and we can plot this curve in black, for example, and to make it clear, we'll put the labels here, so this is our time, seconds and this is our displacement or our uh, x as function of t and that will be in meters. We can also use the axis command to limit the what we're going to look in the screen. Now I've already saved this script uh, with this name here, so I can run it and see what we get as a result. So this is our displacement as function of time. And we can see that this curve starts exactly where we put our initial, initial displacement. So it starts here at 1 meter. And as this spring uh, stores and releases elastic energy to this mass, the mass oscillates from 
one to minus one meter so we can imagine here this block this block going uh, back and forth all the way up to 10 seconds and we can see it does one oscillation roughly each two seconds so this is the period of oscillation and it keeps going that as we don't have any dissipation of energy it keeps going that with the same amplitude so that is the response of a basic uh, spring block system now we'll be interested in understanding how this response varies as we change some of the parameters of the system or we change initial conditions and that's what we're going to do in the next videos